Lads and ladies, welcome back. I've been doing some thinking lately. You ever heard of the place? Oh, it's not a place. It's an organization. The PETA. People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Uh, you hear them every now and again. They pop up on Twitter. Or you hear some news article or another. Maybe a friend has something to say. But I thought, you know, why not get it straight from the source? How about I go ahead and look at PETA's website? So here we are. We're already starting off with a, on a great foot. <laughs> awesome. Care about the planet? Then either go vegan or put a cork in it. No. End speciesism. Such a dark looking photo. Dang. Alright, well. Let's see what else they have to say besides all of these. Help animals. That's always a good thing, right? Help push Hermes, Louis, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, and Prada to ditch exotic skins. I have heard of some of those. We've got help close Elizabeth Murray's monkey terror lab with free flyers. Oh, we could get free flyers. They're not even charging for the flyers. That's not, that's good. That's great. Not a nugget. Interesting. Not a Nugget joins the battle. PETA's thrilling animal rights advocacy games showed that smashing speciesism was a worthwhile fight. That's exactly why our gaming mascot, Not a Nugget, a little chick I suppose, would make a perfect addition to the roster of characters featured in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. They can't be serious. They have to be joking. Do they really think they're going to stick that in there? In fact, he's already a familiar face to thousands of gamers who play PETA's informative, moving, and action-packed titles online every month. Oh no. Well, we'll come back to that. Because not a nugget like PETA never stops raising awareness of animal suffering at human hands, he'd be a perfect fit alongside Mario... That's the first time I've said that. Mario, Pikachu, Kirby, and other heroes in the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate lineup. That's why we're calling on Misa Misahiro Sakura Sakurai. I don't know if I pronounced that right. The game's director and Nintendo to put PETA's Not a Nugget mascot in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate as one of the la last downloadable fighters in the game. How old is this? How old is this article? I'm not seeing it. Don't see a date. That's never a good sign. Always date your articles, lads. It really helps. PETA's space slash neuter volunteer campaign. That's... I'm not volunteering. We're just looking it up. Always adopt. Always have animals spayed or neutered. Never breed or buy. Well, I know there is a lot of issues, especially with dogs that are purebred. Just because, you know, the whole genetics thing. Where one issue and one genetics kind of cycles through if you just keep it in there. Like incest. Anyway, so that could be an argument against breeding. Um, however, just because of that doesn't mean you can't love your animals. Doesn't mean you can't do everything good for them. Ever well, everything. What? Why is bi lit up? We're just going down this rabbit hole here. Oh. Good heavens, that is a sad looking little hedgehog right there. Every year, people succumb to the temptation to purchase exotic animals like hedgehogs. Hedgehogs. Do those count as exotic? I mean, macaws. People have macaws. They, they're jungle birds, I think. Rainforest birds. So, lizards and monkeys. I can see where these fit in. I've never considered hedgehogs, hedgehogs exotic. Frankly, I've never considered lizards exotic, too, which is, you know, they're everywhere. Even tigers and bears. That's not safe for several reasons. <laughs> From stores, auctions, or the internet, to keep them as pets. But often, life in captivity rapidly leads to pain and death for these animals who can easily suffer from malnutrition, an unnatural and uncomfortable environment, loneliness, and the overwhelming stress of confinement. The exotic animal trade is also deadly for animals we don't see. For every animal who makes it to the store or the auction, countless others die along the way. I don't know the statistics for all of this. And, you know, they are an organization for animal rights, so I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Investigations. Now that's intriguing. What is PETA investigating? D 
deaths swept under the rug for nuggets. PETA exposes fast food suppliers' massive chick hatchery. I don't think this is a surprise to most people. Factory farming is, you know, kind of mortifying when you think about it for too long. However, like I said, I don't think it's a big surprise. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm just being snubby here. It's not a big surprise to me. Aging elephants with swollen feet, toenail problems, exploited at Circus World Museum. So is it a circus or a museum? Also, I thought, do they still have animals in the circus? I thought it was mostly just acrobats now. I've not been to the circus since I was very, very, very little. But I do remember being very disappointed that there was no lions and tigers jumping through flaming hoops. You know, just, just people doing silly stunts. Who wants to see that? Isa and Viola come from Carson and Barnes Circus. So it's a circus and a museum? Alright. That was. Pet store suppliers with former ties to SeaWorld deprives dying animals of care. First of its kind, PETA video. Workers tear live animals apart, throw them away in Florida's stone crab industry. Ugh. I would like to see sources. I'm not saying I doubt what's going on here. But I would like some sources that aren't from PETA. Because that's always good when you're doing research into something is sources that aren't from the thing that's it aren't from the place that it's that's telling you what's happening. So far we have PETA Asia investigation, PETA.org. Uh, footage of ostriches, PETA.org. Um, what? What else do they have? Australian cattle butchered alive. Do they have any sources in this one? So far, no. 184 reports. Ah, agriculture.gov.au. Let's do it. Here we go. EC, ES, wait, hey, hey. E -C -C -E nah, ESCAS investigations. Let's see. Report of noncompliance. I don't know what the ECSA is. ESCAS is. Uh, I'm just going to assume it has something to do with Australian agriculture. Report of noncompliance with ESCAS. -E ESCAS. We're going to call it ESCAS. Requirements for cattle exported to Vietnam. Cattle were removed from facilities outside the exporter supply chain. Report of noncompliance with ESCA's control status for cattle in Vietnam. Report of noncompliance with ESCA's control and animal welfare standards for sheep in Kauai. Kuwait? Kuwait, probably. During discharge of a consummate in Kuwait, sheep were removed from the loading platform and placed into a ute. I don't... I thought that was an American Indian tribe. Or a Native American. The staff moving the sheep to the ute were observed pulling a sheep by its legs. So it looks like these are all pretty... Oh, they've got a whole thing starting in 2012. Let's see what the earliest one is. Allegation of noncompliance with ESCAS requirements in four abattoirs in Indonesia. Alright, so it looks like they have a source here that's not from themselves. Well, let's see. Let's look at one more thing about. Let's, you know, might as well go right to the source. What are they about? What do they got? Our mission statement, People for the Ethical Treatment of, of Animals, PETA, is the largest animal rights organization in the world, and PETA entities have more than 9 million members and supporters globally. PETA exposes speciesism, a human supremacist worldview, and focuses its attention on the four areas in which the largest number of animals suffer the most intensely on, for the longest periods of time. In laboratories of the food industry, excuse me, in laboratories, in the food industry, in the clothing trade, and the entertainment business. We also work on a variety of other issues, including the cruel killing of rodents, birds, and other animals who are often considered pests, as well as cruelty to domestic animals. PETA works through public education, investigative news gathering, and reporting, research, animal rescue, legislation, special events, celebrity involvement, and protest campaigns. 
All right. Well, Peter. Sounds like they all just care about animals. You know, they want to do right by, by creatures that aren't human. So, I guess, after all, they're not... PETA activists super glue themselves to the counter at Seattle Starbucks headquarters. PETA euthanized 1,675 animals in 2012. PETA killed nearly 1,600 cats and dogs in 2019. Euthanasia at PETA's shelter still occurring at alarming rate. PETA, it's the family's fault we killed their dog. PETA's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad history of killing animals. Farming Simulator 17 asked by PETA to depict pig slaughter. PETA dresses as KKK members outside Westminster Dog Show. PETA urges cat owners to feed a vegan pet food diet. PETA attempts to explore man's death in name of animal rights. PETA death toll surpasses 40,000. Yeah, so... They're not exactly entirely truthful about themselves on their website, it seems. Again, sources. So, it looks like we've got here... Oh, we've got an entire website here that looks like a counter to PETA called PETA Kills Animals. And we're going to look right here at proof. The Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, VDEX, requires all animal shelters to report the number of cats and dogs they take in each year. The record indicates how many cats and dogs were reclaimed by their owners, adopted out, transferred to other Virginia releasing agencies, i.e. animal shelters and animal control, transferred to out-of-state releasing agencies, died of natural causes, euthanized, and how many the shelter held, held alive at the end of the calendar year. We added the dogs and cats euthanized and divided by the total number of dogs and cats taken in, excluding those held only for sterilization surgery, to determine the percentage of dogs and cats PETA killed in a given year. Uh, by, public f by filling public re record requests under Virginia's sunshine laws, what on earth is a sunshine law? With the de <coughs> I guess the sun has to be out so many days a year or something. Not in Virginia, not in the summer. <laughs> Storms at least once a week. With the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. The information for years 2004 to 2010 is also available on the VDEX website for public inspection. Animals classified as other from 2004 to 2009 include those reported by PETA as held for sterilization. Oh my gosh. Click here to see the proof. It's the same website. Whew. So, PETA's not looking great so far. But PETA Kills Animals is not our only source here. The dark side of PETA's serial mercy killings, leading campaigns and pseudoscience. Misleading campaigns. Let's see. It won't scroll. Here we go. Well, there's a larger philosophical discussion we made here. I skipped an entire part of this. Okay. PETA, People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, is an animal rights organization, one of the largest and most influential in the world. They have a history of using impactful and very visible campaigns carried out on behalf of animals. Yet PETA casts a very dark shadow, riddled with stories about needless euthanization, manipulation, and even eco-terrorism. Even among other animal activists, PETA's ways are disliked. Let's see why there's so much controversy surrounding them. This is from ZMEScience.com, in case you can't read the page. While there's a larger philosophical discussion to be made here, PETA employees have taken their case to an inhumane level. On at least two instances, PETA workers have been arrested for stealing other people's pets. Although PETA disowned this practice, and the charges were dropped because intent of the workers in those cases was not sufficiently clear. Yeah, that's sketchy. The organization never really explained what happened when two employees snatched a dog from someone's porch and euthanized after just two hours. After months of silence, PETA finally claimed that the animal had been confused for another one, but no satisfying explanation was offered. That's the thing about intent, is you can't really prove it, can ya? The owners of Maya, the dog presented in the image above, right there, uh, who was euthanized by PETA, sued the group. They uh, showed that other, they showed that over several weeks, PETA representatives had been visiting the trailer park where the owners lived, befriending them and talking to them about neutering and spaying animals. But one day, they tried to lure Maya out of her home. When that failed, they simply stole and killed her within hours. Although Virginia law dictates that private shelters like PETA must notify the municipal animal control and must keep animals safe for at least five days, PETA did neither. Nice going, PETA. PETA openly opposes the no-kill movement and will kill perfectly adoptable animals, even puppies and kittens. In fact, PETA does not believe that animals have a right to live. You know, this sounds a little contradictory. Newkirk said as much. I don't know who Newkirk is. He was probably mentioned previously. Ingrid Newkirk, PETA's president. Oh, great. Good. 
Newkirk said as much in a postcard to Nathan Winograd, a Stanford Law graduate who leads the no-kill movement. We do not advocate right to life for animals. Well, what other li rights? What? <laughs> what is this? Uh... Advocating for the killing of certain breeds. Oh, look at that sweet puppy. The idea that pit bulls are inherently aggressive and dangerous has been disproven by science several times. Well, what is PETA saying? Okay. PETA also recommends a ban on the adoption and release of dangerous dogs and fighting breeds, commonly known as pit bulls, the group wrote in a letter of the mayor, Willie, to the mayor of Williamson County. And it is that pit bulls are inherently aggressive and dangerous has been disproven by science several times. The PETA stance is not only non-scientific, shocker, but it is inhumane as, as exemplified by the official ASPCA, ASPCA stance on pit bulls. Funding arson and domestic terrorism. Throughout its history, PETA has offered tens of thousands of dollars to individuals or groups performing violent crimes, including a 1,500 donation to ELF, a group which has been classified as domestic terrorism by the FBI. Whew. Not looking good. PETA also paid 72, more than that, $70,200 for the defense of Rod Cor Coronado, a serial arsonist convicted of burning down a Michigan State University research laboratory. In addition to supporting him financially, PETA has been open has openly supported this type of action. With PETA vegetarian campaign campaign coordinator Bruce Frederick reportedly telling an animal rights convention that blowing stuff up and smashing windows is a great way to bring about animal liberation, and adding "Hallelujah to the people who are willing to do it." Whew. Oh, good heavens! So I guess these are PETA comics. Great. I'm sure we can find those on the website, too. <laughs> Here we go. Lexicology.com. Euthanasia at PETA's shelter still occurring at an alarming rate. This is from last year. On prior occasions, here and here. Let's see what here and here are. Why don't we? DwayneMorris.com and DwayneMorris.com. Peter offers unconvincing defense for the high kill shelter, high kill rate in its shelter. We have written about, oh, we have written about, okay, that makes sense. About the high rate at which animal rights, or, rights organization, People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, euthanizes the animals that it takes at its Norfolk, Virginia, animal shelter. All public and private animal shelters and other animal releasing agencies in the Commonwealth of Virginia are required to submit an annual summary of their animal custody re records to the Virginia Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services. So yeah, it sounds like what we've heard. Oh my gosh. Look at these. Dogs euthanized as percentage of dogs in custody of Virginia 2020. The red here is PETA. Private shelters, public shelters, all agencies. Whew. Not looking good. <laughs> if, as the, one, as the One Green Planet article asserts, PETA has nothing to hide, then PETA should forthrightly state whether each and every one of the 1,763 animals that it euthanized in 2020 was either beyond medical attention and suffering unnecessarily, or was unadoptable. Yeah, I agree. PETA asks a village named Wool to change its name to Vegan Wool. I thought this was a joke, the New York Times here. It began, PETA says, as a playful attempt to draw attention to animal cruelty in the wool industry. The animal rights group sent a letter asking the English village of Wool to change its name to Vegan Wool. You know, a funny little joke. A little ha-ha for you. But the letter from the British branch of People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, received on Wednesday by village officials, attracted scorn and ridicule from the residents of Wool after it was posted on Facebook by the local parish council clerk, according to the news. With a simple name change, your village can take a stand against this, 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 this cruelty, Alyssa Allen, director of PETA's London office, wrote, pointing to evidence of mistreatment of sheep on farms around the world. In exchange for the name change, Miss Allen said, We'd be happy to provide every vegan wool household that would like one with a cozy, cruelty-free blanket. I hope they said no. Let's see. <laughs> the name wool, which is more than 1,000 years old, derives from willen, or well, which means spring, the council said. Ms. Peta, Ms. Allen said PETA knew that and wanted only to draw attention to its campaign in a fun way. So what I'm getting here is, you know, like when, it's like when your brother hits you, and then you complain to mom, and he goes, no, it was just a joke, I'm just, I'm just joking, 
It was just a prank. Ha ha, it was funny. It was supposed to be funny. <laughs> it sounds like backtracking to me. Where they go, hey, you should change your name. And the village says, no. And, like, here's what it means. It doesn't mean sheep wool. And they go, oh, ha ha, we knew that. We were just being silly. Hoo hoo. Yeah, well, I was hoping to be able to read that uh, Your Dad Kills Animals comic because it looked like I could you know, poke some fun at it. Unfortunately, I can't find it, and I'm not going to attempt to pay for it. So, uh, they do have some kids' comics. Guess what? They've got a whole kids' website. Hooray! Um, I was looking at some of them, but unfortunately, they're incredibly boring and dumb. So, I'll just, if you're that interested, you can go find it yourself. But that's going to be it for this video, except we do have PETA games. I'm not going to play them in this one. So check out the game. So check out my other video where I play PETA's games. Um, Monkey Fright. Meat is Murder the Game. Pokemon Red, White, and Blue. <laughs> oh, they look great. All right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining me on this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.